Hi everyone, welcome to this video all about the My Energy Eddy. The goal of this video is not to tell you all about the settings and every part of using the Eddy, it's more the principles behind it, how it works, how you can use it, and what are the benefits in having it in your home as part of your solar energy system. So to kick things off, we're just going to get into what is the Eddy um, and what how you can expect it to work with your solar PV system. So in its simplest terms, the My Energy Eddy is an on and off switch for your hot water cylinder. The way this is going to work is going to watch what your solar is doing and then turn the, the hot water cylinder on or off. That's the simplest way it works. In addition to that, it doesn't just turn it on or off, it actually matches the, the, the amount it's heating the cylinder is matched to the amount of energy being produced on the roof and not used in the house. So if the panels are producing one kilowatt and only half of that is being used in the home and the rest is going out of the door to the grid, the eddy is going to turn your immersion cylinder on at half a kilowatt as well. So that one kilowatt, half in the house, half into the eddy, that's the way that works. Now, even if it's at 100 watts or 1.5 kilowatts, the eddy is going to try and match the solar energy power to the immersion heater power usage. So there, you know, you've got this much power here, you've got over here, you've got your energy being used in the immersion tank. Now, how this is different to a standard immersion heater switch where you just go and turn it on or off, or you put it on a timer, the way that's different is if you had a three kilowatt immersion heater and you turned it on, it's going to demand three kilowatts of energy at once. So if that's on for an hour, you're going to use um, three kilowatt hours. Now, if your solar is only producing one kilowatt and you for that hour is one kilowatt hour, you're going to be taking two kilowatt hours from the grid, which you're going to have paid for, even though you've got solar energy available. Same with battery storage. When that gets involved, you could have a full battery. Your immersion heater comes on at full three kilowatts. It's going to drain the battery into the immersion heater. Instead, you might have trickled the power in throughout the day from the solar instead of having it all in one lump for 30 minutes or an hour. So that's the idea of the eddy. It uses the power available to heat the water and no more. So it doesn't use grid use at all, it just uses solar. In addition to doing this, if you're in the My Energy ecosystem with other devices, you can set the priorities. So Zappy might go first and charge a car and then Eddie takes up the rest. What that's also useful for is when your Zappy is waiting for surplus, it won't react until it's going to see 1.4 kilowatts. If that's not available, you can have that go into the Eddie instead. So that's the simplest way of how the Eddie works. It's basically an on and off switch for your immersion heater that comes on to match the available solar power. So how this connects to your heating system it's going to connect to the electric immersion cylinder on your tank. So if you've got a tank in your house, which it might look like this green one here, the older type with the immersion heater on top, which is this little silver thing here, or you might have a newer type, which is this way. You might have one at the bottom here, or you might have two. So these would normally have a cable coming off them. And this cable coming off would go to an immersion heater switch, which is on the wall or you might even have a timer in place already and the eddy is going to go in. So hopefully you've got you've got these in place already. So you end up with a cable coming off here and then that goes to your eddy, that goes on the wall here. Simple as that. Now, this is the plan and, and this is what we're hoping for. Now, if you've not got any power in place to your cylinders already, which is quite usual, you can wire the eddy to a socket outlet if you need to and turn the power down. It's not really advisable. It should be on a higher single supply from your consuming unit. Um, but you've got options for this with the eddy. These are all, all things you can do to get it working. But generally, you'll have a new circuit coming into the eddy. It's connected straight to your immersion heater and off you go. Now, if you've got a combi boiler, there are ways to make it work that are probably beyond the scope of this video. Some combi boilers, you can have an immersion cylinder like this, and I'm sure the plumber, plumbers out there are tearing the hair out because I'm not using the right words, but you know, an immersion cylinder like these two, that could be before your boiler, which then lets the boiler get preheated water into the, into the um, hot water circuit. 
it's a very unusual setup you, you very rarely see things like that but in general what you want is you've got an electric heating element in your house already you can add the eddy to it so the the next thing to cover and main, the main reason for this video i guess is um how the eddy works with existing central heating now this is the most common question we get um, they've got central heating already, so they've got a gas boiler on the wall, which is controlled with something like the Drayton Lifestyles wireless stat like this one, or the, uh, the the Nest thermostat like this one. And these, what they're essentially doing is using the gas boiler to heat up that water cylinder that we saw in the previous slide. Um, the gas boiler is heating up that water cylinder, and then the water is being stored there until it's ready to use so in the morning you might have it come on for an hour or two and in the evening it comes on for an hour or two now the way that eddy works with this it, there's two different ways you can use it number one is you can turn your gas off so all summer when you don't need your heating you could just turn your boiler off or turn it down really low and just let the eddy handle everything the other way which is more likely to happen is you want the eddy to supplement your gas or the gas to supplement your eddy as ever sees fit. Now, the way you can make this work is using your cylinder stat here, you can set the temperature on the cylinder stat and set the temperature on the thermostat in the immersion element, which is the uh, as part of this. So in, in these areas here, um, you're gonna get a thermostat inside them. Now, if those thermostats are set and you've got the temperatures correct, you can make sure that the eddy is heating up and warming the tank and the gas boiler is not coming on once the electrics up to temperature. If the electrics are up to temperature already, then the gas boiler sits there and waits till you've used some hot water and then it will bring it on afterwards. If the, um, if the eddy has been pumping energy in all day and your temperature is up to water just from the electric, when the gas boiler is going to come on at tea time, like most people have it, it's going to see that it's already warm. It's not going to need any gas. If your thermostat in the, in the gas boiler, so this cylinder stat, which is often found on the side of the tank, if that is set higher than the electric thermostat, it's going to top it up with gas. So if you're heating the water with electric and that's cutting off at 60 degrees, the gas will then further heat it up to whatever you've got it set up, maybe 65 or 70 or whatever you've got it set up. And it's the same the other way around. If you've got your gas boiler on and you've got your gas to stop at 60, your eddy can then maybe go up to 70 and add a little more, bit more heat to the tank. So that's how they can work alongside each other and you can kind of tweak the priorities on that to make sure you're always getting hot water when you need it. You don't want to be turning your gas boiler off, then have a few days of no sun and the eddy won't be pumping water in from the sun. It doesn't pump water in, but it's the easiest way to, to explain it. Um, the other thing to think about is you can boost the eddy as well. So if you know that your soul is going to be producing energy, your eddy is going to fill up the tank in the middle of the day but you're going to want some more hot water at tea time after the sun's gone down but your batteries are full you could have the eddy boost and have it empty the batteries electrically into the hot water element now that's an option as well you've got to decide with your personal home usage which makes the most sense are you going to need that energy in the house overnight or are you happy for the battery stored energy to be converted to the hot water and how would that look for your, um, you know, what you're going to be paying for to run the house later on? If the batteries are empty, then you draw in energy from the grid. You might have been cheaper to have used gas for that hot water, or you might be better off using the electric. This sort of thing comes down to personal use, seeing how your energy use is going, and deciding what are the best things that will work for you. I, I can't sit and tell you what's the absolute best, because it just comes down to system size, solar energy availability, usage from your battery and all these things together. So this is why it's never um, a one size fits all solar PV system. It's more of a, a customized bespoke home energy system that encompasses your solar, your batteries, your water heater controllers, including your gas and traditional heating methods, um, because these are all part of the same system and they've got to work together. And even though they might not talk directly to each other, you you do these things that will make them work nicely together without causing trouble. So hopefully this video has been really informative and you've got some takeaways from it. If you've got any questions, 
you can leave leave your questions in the comments below don't forget to like subscribe leave any comments you may have um i know it says youtube on here but we'll probably be sharing this to other platforms as well so the eddy is something that we fit on a lot of our systems and quite often we get these questions and we get more questions about how the thing works than the questions of how to use it if that makes sense how to use it, it's pretty simple it, it runs itself and the app you get just tells you how to do everything but knowing how you should use it in the home is a bit more complicated and it's not always explained in the app so hopefully this has been useful and i'll see you on the next video